After all, we are animals ourselves. You know, it was just a few thousand years ago that our ancestors were using primitive grunts to communicate. <laughs> Evolution is accomplished over millions of years. <laughs> what a bunch of dumbasses. Yeah, <laughs> really. <laughs> Uh, even like Beavis and Butthead get it? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you tell them, Butthead, it's not like animals put their shirts on like this and go, I need TP for my bungalow! I mean, look at this idiot, he doesn't even know that they have water at the zoo! <laughs> you know, and the evolutionists believe that he's our cousin. <laughs> Strong you are with the force, yes! <laughs> But wise you are not if thou believest in evolution. But you see, to evolutionists, evolutions, they're precious. And if you try to take it away from them, they'll be like, No, not my precious! My precious is lost! No! My mommy told me that I come from a monkey, but I don't believe her. Because if we come from monkeys, where the monkeys come from? Uh, yeah, it's going to be kind of difficult to top the introduction this time. Hi everyone, this is Venom Fang X, and welcome back to my series where I disprove the theory of evolution. This is part four, and if you've not seen the first three parts, please check out one, two, and three. You can click there on the screen, and it'll take you right to it. I just wanted to make a few opening comments. I made a quick video with Cobain, who is a Christian who believes in evolution, and we made a collaborative video to explain to you guys that even though we may disagree on how God created the heavens and the earth, we do agree that God created the heavens and the earth. So the way that a creationist should relate to an evolutionist is with love. That's what we're all about here. And if you're an atheist who believes in evolution, I want you, to guys, I want you guys to know that I love you. Okay, I'm not trying to call you guys, uh, you know, you're an effing this or a essing this. No, no, no. Not like you guys have been doing to me. You know, the evolutionists have been foaming at the mouth because I've been trying to take their precious away from them. You know, if you go up to a kid who believes in Santa Claus and you start blowing your lid at him, people are going to look at you like you're, you're either seriously messed up in the head or like, do you feel threatened by this kid who believes in Santa Claus? No one, no one blows their lid because a child believes in Santa Claus. And if the evolutionists were so comfortable in their worldview, they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't look at someone like me who doesn't believe in it and start going off on, our, you know, swearing and using vulgarity and name calling of the worst kind, saying my mother is a this and my whatever, whatever. So uh, whenever I see an evolutionist doing that, uh, the only thing I can say is I must really be threatening their worldview, you know? How else can you explain why they get so upset? Evolutionists don't upset me. You've never seen me just blow my lid off at an evolutionist because their theory doesn't threaten me. Uh, I know they're wrong, and I'm comfortable with that. So I just wanted to say that, uh, and I hope you guys check out that video I made with Cobain, which explains in detail how we relate to people who believe in evolution. And uh, I just want to talk about geological evidence of the worldwide flood, and we're going to talk about Noah's Ark. So let's, uh, let's get right into this. This is what the evolutionists call the geological column. They claim that the various layers of rock we see around the world built upon each other over millions of years, which is why we find these various layers of rock. However, there are many problems with this. One of the glaring problems are the limestone deposits throughout the various layers. You know, you'd think if the rock was being deposited every couple of millions of years, it would find no reason to deposit limestone particularly for a few million years, then take a break from its regular diet and move on to clay and other sediments, only to return to limestone for another few million years, and then back to the rest of the sediments. How can this possibly be explained another way? Using this neat little tool, we can see what is called hydraulic sorting in action. There is water in this little case, along with clay and sand and various other materials of different density. As the clay and sand drops down through the water, the water is going to sort them by density into layers. And here we see that there are actually different layers of different densities. It goes thick, then thin, thick, then thin, thick, then thin, over and over again. That's exactly what we see. So if the world was covered in water for a year, as the Bible says, we would expect to see these sediment layers and these various layers of scattering, uh, you know, limestone, then clay, and then 
something else, and then limestone again, and then so the evidence actually suggests that there was a worldwide flood because evolutionists cannot explain how limestone would build up for millions of years and then take a break, you know, for clay and some other things, and then limestone would return, and then again clay and some other stuff, and then limestone again and so on and so forth. It simply does not make sense, but the worldwide flood explains that beautifully. Now I want you to think with me for a moment. If we find these strata layers all over the earth building upon each other, where is the sediment coming from? Because if you take it away from another place to put it somewhere else, that means you're losing in another place. Now if this is coming from the oceans, then how is the what is from the bottom of the oceans being built upon the highest mountains? It simply does not make sense. Is it coming from outer space? Well, if that's true, then why is it raining down limestone for a million years and then changing its diet to clay and other sediments and then back to limestone and so on and so forth? It simply does not make sense. A worldwide flood and hydraulic sorting is the only explanation. I've got a quick random question for you. How long do you think a tree can stand? The oldest tree on the known planet is about 4,000 years old, which is what we would expect if there was a flood about 4,000 years ago. But besides that, we find petrified, fossilized trees sticking up through these so-called strata layers. So you only have a few explanations. Either you have to believe that these trees stood for millions of years as they were being buried, or that they grew through solid rock, or they were buried rapidly. You have no other choice, and uh, the rapid burial is the only one that fits the evidence and logic. These trees are what are called polystrate fossils. Poly means many, and straight means strata. They go through many layers of strata, and they are on every single continent on the planet. Now this is the Grand Canyon, which I believe is wonderful proof of the worldwide flood. Take a look at the strata layers that you see here, as well the flat lines between the various layers. There is no erosion between them. That proves that this happened all at once. The Bible says there was a year-long flood, so this canyon likely formed over a year-long process. The top of the canyon is flat, as you can see. Now, if water entered into the canyon at the top and slowly broke this canyon down as a spillway, that means that water must have been over the top of the canyon, and yet it is flat as far as the eye can see, which means that water covered as far as the eye can see. It is also important to note that between these various layers, there is absolutely no erosion marks, which means that this happened very quickly. Even using your mind's eye, you can see the curvature of, the, of these various rocks. I mean, rock can't curve. So this proves that this was created soft and very quickly. The Bible says, again, there was a year-long flood, and you can see, you can see, even though the water's not there anymore, that this was caused by a massive amount of water. Evolutionists are guilty of imposing their interpretation of the Grand Canyon and the strata layers. The fact is the Grand Canyon exists and that there are layers of strata throughout the earth. There is, however, differing views on how the canyon was formed and how those sediment layers got there. The creationist says that the Grand Canyon formed quickly by a lot of water over a little bit of time and that the layers are from the flood. The evolutionists say that the Grand Canyon formed slowly with a little bit of water over a lot of time and that the layers form slowly over millions of years. Now ask yourself, what does the evidence suggest? Now here's something to think about. The top of the canyon is higher than the bottom of the canyon. I know you know that, but this is why this is important. If the top of the canyon, okay, is the earliest, meaning, you know, the bottom is the oldest and it's been piling up over and over for millions of years, then how is it that at the top of the canyon it stretches for hundreds of miles? Are you telling me that strata layers laid themselves down, limestone upon clay upon limestone upon clay, for millions of years, in spans of hundreds of miles? Do you really expect me to believe that? Where is this mud coming from? How is that even possible? It doesn't even make sense. Oh, and by the way, a really quick way to disprove the geological column, how about these fossilized human hands in Cretaceous rock? Did you ever wonder how they make up those ridiculous dates for, you know, fossils and say this lived a billion years ago or whatever? Well, they say that the rocks are dated by index fossils, and then they say that index fossils are dated by the rocks. This is circular reasoning. Sometimes they find an animal in the fossil record and they say this went extinct 300 million years ago. And then we find it living today and they say, oh, it survived for millions of years. No, silly. The earth isn't millions of years old. 
This is what is called a living fossil. Something that is said to be millions of years old is exactly the same as living today. If evolution is true, we would expect these things to have changed a little, but they're exactly the same. Clearly, they aren't millions of years old, and evolution doesn't exist. None of these creatures have any intermediate fossils, and they show no signs of evolution. Are you beginning to get the picture? In the next video, we're going to talk about Noah's Ark. How big was the Ark, and how many animals did he have to take on it? Did he have to take billions of animals? No. Anyways, thanks for watching. God bless. Jesus Christ is Lord. If you want to get saved, click on that link right there. Otherwise, I will see you in part five. God bless. Oh yeah, by the way, if you want to do a full study on the Grand Canyon and how it proves a worldwide flood, go to this website I am now displaying up on your screen. Also, you can visit my website, thewaythetruth.com, and click on the link that says Dinosaurs, Evolution, and the Truth of Creation for a long seminar on pretty much everything we've been discussing.